Welcome everybody to Room World. Yesterday you might remember that we had an animal bill waiting to be resolved. I resolved it and since then the animals, they've literally just this second as you can see been delivered. So we have from the devil's pit. One lynx, one bedbug, one thrombo, a caribou, a meadow ave, a larval atispec, whatever the hell that is, a black scarab, an ibex doe, and a mega scarab one. Uh, all of which I assume are in our stockpile. They are indeed. I had no idea that, to be honest, the tax spot would also be for the animals, but there we are. Um, that's absolutely absurd. I love the thrombo. Do we have any animal bionics mods? Because if we do, I'm going to keep the thrombo around. Despite the fact that I basically, since yesterday as well, spent a lot of time removing mods that we weren't really using. Removing mods that were adding a lot of background. It would be nice to keep up. We're adding a lot of background processing and slowing the game down. And also tidying up our current animal work list. So as you can see, Speed 4 actually runs a lot faster than it was previously. However, before I let it tick too far, we've got a butcher in orbit. So we could sell some of our animals to this butcher. The ones that we don't want, like, for example, the caribou, which I'm not particularly interested in. Larval antispec. Um. So. What is that? And at antispecs are strange semi-insectoid creatures that undergo radical metamorphosis similar to old Terran butterflies. In their larval phases, antispecs are basically harmless medium-sized grub. Okay. As an adult, however, it's entirely a different matter. Huge carnivorous and venomous. Oh, that sounds cool. Um. Two year long vulnerable phase as a lava. Uh, it's already a year old though. So if we can keep it around for another 60 days, we could in theory give us a huge carnivorous flying venomous butterfly. Um, fine. All right, we'll hang on to it. A big bed bug. I'm really not interested in keeping. Mega scarab, black scarab, obviously not interested in that too much either. Um,. What else have we got here? Ibex doe, lynx, those aren't really going to do much for us. I sold all the chameleon yaks. I also sold Clementine the husky. Because um, that way, if we'd have butchered it, I think it would have upset her. But selling it didn't do anything, so I'm fine with that. Obviously, want to keep the boomalopes. And we've got the tetragenic originators and the tetraslog as well. Um, keep the thrombo, though. That's definitely worthwhile, isn't it? I mean, we made like 2,000... I, I mean, more than that. We, we probably made about 4,000 silver in animals from that tithe. That's insane. Obviously, we got very, very lucky with a fucking thrombo. Oh, right, they have no money because we, because I just sold them everything. Um, in that case, then, let's buy some, I would say buy some hay. We could buy some meat for the spiders. Or we could buy some, let's buy some insect jelly. Sure. That is always going to be useful. It's always going to keep our people happy. We might as well trade these animals for insect jelly. And then we can always sell the insect jelly later on as well. Bearing in mind that it lasts forever. So either our people will eat it or we can sell it off to another trader and get the silver out of it if we really want the silver. Wow, we got ourselves a fucking thrombo though. Let's see if we've got... I also adjusted our research as well. I want to get artillery done. I keep saying we should get artillery and I'm, I'm absolutely going to see that through this time. I wanted to check very briefly the... Oh man, at like animal bionics. I don't even know what I'd type in for that. Animal... Autopsy. What about like a uh, bion specialized limbs, artificial metabolism? I don't think we've got anything to give animals limbs. I might have to download a mod so that we can operate on this thrombo and turn it into like a hyper mecha thrombo. I think that would just be that would just be cool to. We, we've been given such a such a an opportunity here that I don't want to pass up. Besides that, though, everybody's basically healed since the mechanoid raid. Edward Crosby obviously had a pretty terrible infection, which has since healed. Everyone's still got a little bit of damage here and there, but besides that, they're, they're mostly okay now. I mean, the only damage, permanent damage we've got here is Helitas is missing a nose, which is really not relevant whatsoever. Who can we have crafting medicine then? Uh, we need drugs, so that would be Delta or what's it? So we could have Delta doing that as a top priority. To be honest, I think always having some medicine prepared is far more important than having than, than doing research, which we could be doing, let's be realistically, forever. We could also give like fertility boosters to our thrombo if we get another one. That would be quite cool. Like a thrombo breeding farm. That would be pretty pretty ambitious and pretty ridiculous, but we could always give it a go. Along with that, of course, we yesterday defeated all those mangonels, but we also got a whole caravan's worth of loot. So we've got a ridiculous amount of sky steel I want to put to use. Um, we could even go as far to replace some of the floors in the base with sky steel tiles. Gives a massive beauty bonus. Actually, you can't? What? All right, forget I said anything. There's actually no sky steel tiles. That oh, doesn't make any sense. All right, fair enough. Maybe we can build walls out of it instead then. Uh, we can build walls out of it. So those give a beauty bonus of n nothing. Oh, what the hell is Sky Steel used for then? Forgive me if I'm wrong. I thought it was always just... Um, 
Stronger than normal steel. Hang on, but we found out that wasn't true yesterday when we tried building a wall out of it. Oh, multipliers were made of this. Oh, it does give more. Right, so it is more beautiful. Unfortunately, building walls out of it no doesn't give the strength of steel, nor does it give the, give the beauty bonus either. Well, that's a bit annoying. So we'd have to build weapons and armor out of it. I'm not really sure if I want to do that, though, in hindsight. Um, I don't know. Let's clear out this stockpile and see what we've actually got before I start committing to various things. I want to see what weapons we've got. See if from that previous uh, ca caravan robbery, but not really. Uh, see if they also give us some better weapons. So after she's done finishing making the medicine, I'll have her... Disassemble all of these mechanoids and sort of see what we've got to work with, really, because we haven't got a huge amount of silver again. Sorry, steel again. Unsurprisingly, we do have a huge amount of silver. One thing I want to do then, before we get too dedicated to this, is let's go ahead and set up another settlement. Let's set up another settlement and this time use them for defense. Use them as a military setup. So let's go to the world map very quickly. Where is that? Where's the map button here? Um, ideally, we want to put them somewhere. Somewhere convenient. So I'm thinking we put them there. That way they can get to roughly everywhere relatively quickly. Obviously, this one is going to be kind of a long way out. Or we could put them up here. And that way, if we expand up further this way, we've still got the opportunity to bring them in into places. Let's put them there. It's basically as close as putting them over there was anyway, isn't it? Um, but this way, we can still expand up along these st dead stingray cliffs and still have the... the, the Defenders basically on call. So let's go ahead and put down. Hopefully I'm doing this in a pretty decent location. I'm not really sure um, Create a new colony uh, Settle so they've got good They've got good food. They've got good animals. They've got good trees. Honestly for a military settlement. That sounds pretty useful one three thousand one hundred and fifty silver They're off. Do you want to upgrade some of our other settlements as well? Now that I know that military is a more important aspect Is there anything we could do to upgrade that maybe I should remove some of the taxes and instead give them military levels? Obviously, Lobo there has a military level of three. Um, oh, wait. Something was destroyed, wasn't it, there? Why don't we replace it with some in-house Merc company? What does that do? Plus one military level, minus 10% tax. 200 silver per tax upkeep period. However, we're using this as tithe anyway, so it's not really going to affect our... As long as we've got enough profit coming in from the other ones, it doesn't really matter. I might even flip over our Devil's Pit back over to profit. Just to be able to fund everything else. I might put down like a military settlement in each one of these. Or maybe it better just to go for one massive military settlement that we dispatch to everywhere else. I'm really not sure how best to balance this. Oh, look, there's new buildings as well. Intergalactic market gives up 15% base tax. Wow. Um, oh, we can't afford it. I might save up for one of those on each of the maps then. Replace some of the other things we've built. Some of the other kind of lower tier. Obviously, we had the Adventurer Guild, which gave... Um, which, which we were originally using for the plus 5% base tax, but now there's the upkeep cost on it. it. Might be worth swapping now, especially if we do want to stick to having one settlement with all the military level. Regardless, we'll wait for the next tax cycle first, because we can't really afford it for the time being. What I'm actually thinking, let's go as far as just tithe everything. Uh, oh, sorry, disable the tithe on everything. Save up a, a shitload of silver. You can see that we're going to get, obviously, a ridiculous amount there. Bring in loads and loads of silver, and then focus everything we've got into one really, really hyper-powerful military settlement. Oh, no. I mean, I mean, this is good, don't get me wrong. Our Blizzarisks, so three of them. Blizzarisk 1, our first ever Blizzarisk has grown into a full-blown adult Blizzarisk. They also produce eggs? Fuck. Um, well, we will need to set up that manager job as soon as possible. I didn't really make myself clear on what I meant when I was setting up this Blizzarisk job. But basically, just to re-explain that, I didn't bother setting it up properly because it doesn't matter for the time being, right? So we might as well set the adults to 999 because we can't control it until we've got adults anyway. Uh, so I'm just going to leave it how it is for the time being. Anyway, uh, we might need to find a way to stop this egg production. Um, remove pregnancy. That's not going to help out. I guess I'll just have to make sure they're hauled into an area where they either freeze or we use the manager mod to let them hatch but immediately butcher them when they're hatched. How did you survive the... How did you survive being sold off? As far as I recall, these, these things are like good pack animals, aren't they? Oh, no, I remember what it is. They're really, really fast when you have Giddy Up, but we don't have the Giddy Up mod installed this time around. Um, might just, might just, might just kill you off, friend. The new settlement of Candelaria has been formed. Nice. Okay. So we've only got 2,100 silver. We might as well see what we can do for them for the time being. Um, colonies Candelaria. Um, I guess we might as well set the workers doing to whatever will give us some profit. Uh... So if we go all in on the food, that gives us 577. Uh, if we go all in on the... I assume the food is going to be the most profitable. N absolutely not at all. Nope, not even remotely. Oh, because base value modifier... All oh, right, got it, got it, got it. Um, 
There's one, one point, okay, so it's eight, eight, four, two, and then finally logging. This is not going to be as good as the animals. Oh, I remember why as well, because we've got that doctrine in, enacted, haven't we? We give more animal production. So we'll have these guys on animal production as well, but we are going to use this just as a military settlement. So upgrade building slot. What can we afford early on here? Um, I assume the in-house merc company give plus one military level. The adventurer guild gives plus one military level. Um, about like jailhouse, just lowers unrest. Um... Calista World Research Facility. 150 research a day. That'd be cool. Uh, we've got barracks that give military level. Okay, that could be quite good. Okay, so I think what we want then... A place for soldiers to train 15% combat efficiency. I think we probably want training yard, barracks, the uh, uh, Merc Company, and the Adventurers Guild. Right? I'm not sure if this is the best one, but we might as well go for it. Um, Merc Company... So how much have we got left? We've got like 500, 600 silver left over now. And let's put down a barracks as well. Uh, and then... Oh, we can put barracks and training up. We can build the whole thing up. Nice. Okay, cool. So that's going to give it a pretty hefty base military level. And to be honest, it'll pay for itself in no time as well, as long as we keep on top of some of their profit here. Um, obviously, a lot of the profits from this are going to be going to pay in its own upkeep and the upkeep for everything else. So I can't bank on it too much. Oh, the other thing I did very briefly as well was I changed the, um, the, the killbox design very, very slightly just to add a second wall back here. Because two raids in a row, I've noticed, especially with mechanoids with explosive weaponry, two raids in a row, I've noticed that... They've managed to blow this door down and then they've just obviously rushed through and attacked our people. So I've put down a second wall. What I might even do is put down another door there as well. And then remove that one entirely. I'll just go ahead and replace it with something else, I guess. There we go. Just so that uh, if they do end up blowing this door off, this, we're going to get through two other doors before they can attack us. Forcing them to obviously keep going through the kill box. What I might do when we've got a little bit more steel is start building reinforced walls everywhere. Um, and we can build sky steel reinforced walls. Right, but they, they only had... 1,500 hit points versus, what, the 2,000 with regular steel? Despite the fact it says it's stronger than regular steel. Um, right, got it. Okay. And then limestone walls only give 465. I mean, either way, the sky steel would be a massive upgrade, wouldn't it? Even if we just build the sky steel temporarily and then replace it later on with more dense... Re replace it with regular steel later on. I think that's a good idea. And it's not a huge amount of sky steel either. To build all of that, it's, it's going to be less than 300 sky steel. I mean, also, bearing in mind, we got all of this sky steel for free as well. I'm basically just reinforcing areas that are high risk in terms of breaking down in the kill box. So I've gone ahead and replaced all of this stuff here with the reinforced sky steel as well. It's given it, like, over triple the hit points. So I think it's definitely worthwhile here. But there's no chance in hell that enemies are going to break through this anymore. I think we can agree. Um, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. I think that works pretty well. It might be better to even put down auto doors here too. It's 40 steel per door. We can't really afford it. Um, that's all right. We could just set those to hold open. The only reason I did that too was just in case they burst through here. It gives us a couple of levels to, to prevent the enemies getting even further. I, I think that's enough staggering for the time being. It would be much better to build turrets, obviously, rather than a ridiculous amount of doors or something like that. And the artillery is going to be finished very soon as well, which is, uh, again, kind of higher priority. God, I thought we were in for a raid then. Whenever it slows down like that, it's normally loading in a massive raid, but I think we're good. Um, the spiders need corpses. Or they need just food, realistically. Um, 383. Three. I need to set up an area that can be shared by the spiders. Like a, like a shared food zone for all the animals. Because if I set it to a, a kibble zone for the spiders, obviously they get all the kibble and will eat all the kibble before all the animals are able to get to it. So I'm thinking we'll, we'll dig out through here. We'll build sort of a small room. Not insulated, because the spiders can survive outside of the frozen environment for a little while. Um, but we'll put down just a small room where both spider and regular animal can eat and, and be merry and, and enjoy each other's company. So we'll do something like this, really. Um, six by six, maybe a little bit too large, isn't it? We don't need to be massive. We need to be slightly smaller than that. Hang on. Let's do it like, like there. There we are. Do it five by five. And then dig a little bit of a corridor or we'll put down a door or something for our spiders to get through. I'm going to do it like that. Nice. There we go. Okay. So I, as I recall, this actually costs a fair amount of steel though, doesn't it? Artillery. Yeah, 280. Oh, shit. We could. Oh, man. I, I kind of feel bad about saying this. We could take apart a mortar to be able to build artillery. However, if we now get another mechanoid cluster with auto mortars, that would leave us fully undefended. So I think it would be better to phase them out. Just get the steel necessary to finish these off, then take them all apart rather than the other way around. What is wrong with you? My wife died. That's no excuse to go around and shoot a man. Okay, we'll keep an eye on him, but hopefully given that he's in the arsehole of the base, it shouldn't really matter too much. Or he can die of nuclear radiation. I can't stop this. Unless we go in there and beat him, but the issue is he's got a charge rifle. That's more than enough to be able to kill someone. 
Fuck it. <laughs> Fuck it. Get radiation, son. Hang on. I didn't even consider that. Think of all the Krakens we killed yesterday. They're all going to drop a mecha tentacle. We could give... <laughs> <laughs> we can give Sharamus two massive tentacle arms. Oh my god, it's that CK2 series all over again. He's got a mutant leg. He's got a mutant eye. Now we give him two mecha tentacles as well. Do they not reduce... They don't reduce manipulation too far, though, do they? Um, by which, I mean, I wanted to still be able to hold a sword. 90%. Uh, so he's only going to lose 20% manipulation. And he can still use... He's basically got his mono sword on a massive mecha tentacle. This is so good. The Cyber Orc project is back, and it is it is better than ever. I also want to give him back the um, the shield generator, wherever that's ended up. You know what? I might make an entirely separate uh, outfit for him here. Go, Rose. Transform young Sharamus into mighty Mecha Sharamus. Do we have anything else we can put on him? We've got we've got loads of mutant legs and mutant eyes as well. Um, honestly, why not? I know I want him to be- No, I want him to be mecha. No, let's not embrace it too much. I don't- There's no point in installing the mutant stuff. We're just gonna replace it later on. I mean, granted, it's more useful than just having them sitting in the freezer, I guess. And I guess if we add a new- I guess if we add a new, like, cyber leg, it will replace his mutant one. So, uh, so mutant leg, right leg, and then mutant eye in the right eye hole, and then he's gonna be basically combat ready. Excellent work, Dr. Rose. Perfect. <laughs> so good. Um... Decent manipulation ability is not too shabby of a melee weapon. Maybe maybe I should have just lift, left him. Because if he's using the um, sword anyway, we probably should have just left him with his arms. Because I imagine it's all it's done is just make his arms less useful now. But obviously we'll be upgrading him from mecha tentacles to full-blown bionic arms eventually. I just like the idea of our orc having gigantic expandable mecha tentacles. Oh, shit. Taking apart those mechanoids gave us enough steel to... Build the artillery. Well, the cool thing about that was I was going to say, let's go ahead and build a washing machine as soon as possible. Because that way we can wash a load of this crappy old armor um, and crappy old gear and actually turn it back into useful, uh, I mean, useful clothing, ideally. Where do I want to put these? I want to put them in the stockpile room. Let's put them there. That makes the most sense. That way we're not objecting, uh, ob objecting? We're not obstructing our new robot bay. But also they're still, we need to make them convenient to the stockpile at the end of the day. So that obviously dragging clothes from one end of the colony to the other wouldn't. Be particularly helpful. 100 steel apiece. So from taking apart the mortars, we should be able to get more than enough back from that. Let's get pork very quickly to man steel mortar. No, no, I want you to take them apart. Here's something I want to check for a while, right? All the sprinklers are turned on. How fast does the water drain? Really not that much. Wow. Maybe this was. Maybe this whole system was a little bit overkill. Maybe just another water tower would have hurt. We could remove this wind pump, though. Um, bear in mind, it's all on the same system now. We could, we could probably remove that. Because I think this wasn't at capacity last time I checked. Oh, cool. Right, so we've also finished Trench Warfare. So Trench Warfare gives us a few more things in security that will come in quite handy. Obviously, heavy machine gun complexes a little bit uh, little bit old-fashioned at this stage. We've got things like barbed wire, which we could put through. You can move through barbed wire, uh, but it will slow them down. So we could, uh, even in an area like this, we could put it every other block, for example. So like one there, one there, one there. They are quite expensive in terms of steel, so I'm not going to commit to that quite yet. The cool thing is though, the trench... So the trench, I believe, um, we can dig that, like, back here. And it will give our people even more cover in firefights. It takes them a little bit longer to get into it. So if they need to retreat quickly, it's not ideal. But it will provide them with even more significant cover, like I said. So we'll absolutely go for those. Um, are barriers better than sandbags? Uh, they give 65%. Sandbags give 57%. So we could also upgrade to... Sky Steel Barriers. Bear in mind, we got a shitload of Sky Steel for free yesterday. Um, yeah, let's get the sandbags removed as well then. Why not? I want to check you out quickly just to ensure that. Toxic buildup is 36%, 39% there in one tick. Oh, God. Um, I'll keep a close eye on him. I'm hoping it will just drop down soon so that we don't have to get on the wrong end of that uh, wrong end of that charge LMG. Oh, he's actually moving away from the reactor. That would be pretty good. How long is he going to stay berserk for? He's been like this for like 24 hours now. Oh, well. He's, he's the one that's starving as well, by the way. How did the animal... Oh, there we go. All right, right. This is exactly what we're after then. Um, Halatos, what are you doing that's not mining? Also, where's your pickaxe gun? Oh, I need to give everyone back their tools. I don't know why. For whatever reason, it doesn't save their sidearms. Um, well, sometimes it does. Sometimes it doesn't. But obviously with pickaxes and things, it seems to struggle a lot more. Uh, like, for example, Sharamus. Oh, right. He is re-equipping it. Right. I was going to say he also hasn't got his sword, but he's picking that one back up apparently. Right. Good shit. Let's get you to go and dismantle... 
I'll basically go and set up this feeding area before all my goddamn spiders starve to death. Hey, nice. Taxes have been built. Okay. So we're still trying to build up, don't forget, our profit. Actually, that's a lot of profit. My God. Um, let's go ahead and resolve all of that then. That's going to take no time at all to get here as well. Uh, yeah, 0 0.2 days. Apparently that is down to the drop pods, but I never actually confirmed that. Uh, we've got the 0 0.5, 0 0.7. Yeah, it's going to be all be here by the end of today. That's going to be a crazy amount of stuff, and then we'll immediately reinvest that straight away into the military settlement, because I don't obviously want to lose any of our people. Um, so, priority critical. Oh, I wonder if the Holland bots could do this then. And then we only want to allow Tainted Apparel in there, because it's a washing machine after all. Uh, I've never actually used these before, so I'm not entirely sure how they work. Um, allow... Oh, I guess we allow everything besides clean in that case. That should work, yeah? And then allow all... Why didn't I just do that in the first place, you fool? Anyway, let's go ahead and paste that over. There we go. Okay, so we should be allowing absolutely everything in there besides the... Uh, besides clean apparel. I guess what I'll have to do then is also drop this down to important priority. Which is a little bit of a shame, but that's alright. Um, what I will do, actually, is I'll set up this specific... Like, these two clothing racks for... For tainted apparel. I think that's a good idea. Um, so, no clean apparel there and no clean apparel there. And then tainted on everything else. Oh, they're already set to important rather than critical anyway. Right, so that way we should be able to see what we've got that's tainted and what isn't. Let's get those prioritized right now so that I can just make sure this is managed correctly. Ah, oh, there we go. Taxes are here. Oh, give it a give it a second. Uh, video game. Oh, no, they sent in a raid? No, I think it was just a taxi arriving. Okay, cool. So that's going to be immediately going back into... Which one was it again? I need to rename it to, like, Military Settlement just to make my life so much easier. Let's go ahead and rename you to Military Town. Very original, I know, but it's going to be a lot easier at a glance then. Um, and we want to build, so we've got the Venturous Guild. That one's still under construction. We've got the Training Up. We've got the Barracks. It's already Military Level 2. Just go ahead and upgrade it then. Not only will that give us more... Oh, right. <laughs> we actually need to haul it into the top part, don't we? Um, not only will that give us more workers so that we can still make a little bit of profit on it, but obviously that's essential for building up the Military Level. I'm not going to say anything, but I will say... Stay tuned for the Empire mod, because there are some really, really cool stuff coming to it. Very, I've been given a sneak preview of it, but I am obviously not going to spoil that. Just keep your eye out. That's all I'll say. I, I think the, maybe the military stuff will be a bit more handy later on. Um, that might be why I'm so quickly trying to invest into it as soon as possible anyway. All right, there's the rest of our taxes. Right, I was wondering when they're... They're all going to turn up over the next sort of day or so. So we'll, we'll recount it when everything's turned up. Then I'll start spending it. Right, there we go. 9,846 silver. Let's get to it then. So I'm going to upgrade Military Town, obviously. Um, this can take some time. I assume we can't queue up upgrades, though, can we? No, it's already being upgraded. Fair enough. Um, is there anything else we could do right now to help buff it up? I don't think there's any... I mean, it's obviously got the buildings being upgraded. It's got the actual town itself. We could upgrade... Uh... We could upgrade some of our other settlements just sort of generally in order to help boost up their military level just in case we, maybe we're defending two settlements simultaneously or something like that. Um, actually, some of them are still missing buildings. That's got everything. That's fine. That's fine. We could spend the last of that. Um, I mean, this is one of our more profitable settlements anyway. 2,106 beaten only by this one. We could in this one build the... Really crazy profitable. Was it the Intergalactic Market that gives the... It also gives Tithe Modifier. So if we want to sw swap it back over to a Tithe Quarry later on, we could more than certainly do that. But I'm absolutely going to put that one down. The, the base tax bonus from that is huge. Oh, there's also Automated Defense Systems. God damn, I missed that one. Okay. Um, oh, wait. The level of the settlement probably correlates to what buildings you can build there, right? I really have no idea. I feel like I've never seen that one before. Um, I'm going to build the Intergalactic Market. Oh, we can't quite afford it. Bollocks. We're like 160 silver off. That's annoying. Um... Okay, instead then, maybe I shouldn't just fill this up with any old crappy buildings until we've got it up to a few more levels. I suppose anything is better than something. We've just got to accept that that is going to be a loss if we choose to upgrade it later on. Honestly, I'm fine with that. That's right. We're still we're still printing money here. So the next thing I really want to do with all of our steel is to build a room where we can take off our armor and re-equip it. So I'm just going to put it roughly out here. I'm, I'm thinking we might want to put another bracing wall back here or something like that. Um... Nothing really super significant, but maybe something just quite quickly like that. And then a couple of auto doors to allow our people through a little bit sooner. Oh, can't build it until it's done, apparently. That's all right. Um, but, but basically, this will allow us to obviously get our gear equipped a lot sooner. But more importantly, allow them to not wear gear like marine armor in between raids. And that means we can get our work done a lot sooner as well. It's quite expensive though, aren't they? They're 100 silver apiece. Uh, sorry, 100 steel apiece. We've got one, two, three, four, five. Uh, obviously, this one's being reinstalled. We'll put another one there, and we'll put another one here. 
It just about fit one over here as well. Maybe I should I should conquer it over this whole thing. Ah, oh, it doesn't matter too much. We'll, we'll do it like that for the time being. That gives us eight of them. Um, at which point, obviously, we get Delta, Upsa, Smooth Octopus, Rose, Pork, get everyone. Everyone wearing the, the heavy armor to swap it out for civilian gear. Oh! Oh, God, there we go. Talk about the people of the Kanbei faction. Attacking power is five. Okay, um... Well, there's nothing we can really do about that still. Bear in mind, our most powerful settlement is military level three. But I guess sending them to help out would be better than... Change defending forces. Send send the quarry. And then send a defender. Okay. I assume... It's, it's a shame we can't send like everybody to go and dogpile that. But I can understand why you wouldn't want to do that. Otherwise, it would be too easy to... It would be too easy just to uh, win. Yeah, okay, so yeah, it does reset that cool. So make sure those guys are sent there. They're the important ones. Military level of three, it's not really where we want to be, I will admit. But until military town is more upgraded, that's the best we can really offer. How are they doing, by the way? Um, got military level of two. That's not too bad, seeing as we've only just built them, obviously. Oh, wait, look, they do have a military level of three. It's just on here. It hasn't updated yet. Right, okay. Um, does it say on here that they're a military level of three? Uh, change defending force. Military level... Military town. Yeah, military level three. Well, let's send those guys instead, seeing as apparently their troops also are... We, we've got that upgrade building. Was it the barracks? Can't remember off the top of my head now. Training out. Yeah, there we are. 15% combat efficiency. Hopefully, even though they are two levels outclassed by this attacking force, we'll be able to put up more of a fight. Maybe we'll lose slightly less. Not entirely sure. Let's go ahead and set up these then ready for the outfit swap. So we'll say critical clear all. Then weapons will allow all. I guess apparel will allow all as well. No, no, no. Apparel, we only want to allow certain things, I think. So specifically, we want to allow any armor type. So recon armor. Um, what do I, maybe I should just transfer it. Maybe I should just get them all equipped into their best gear and just transfer it all and then transfer it back off. See, if we do it this way, the hauler bots will always make sure there's stuff on it. The only issue is I don't want to miss out on potentially good... Um, I don't want to miss out on potentially good, like, gear for... Um, gear for hands and feet, which I'm not entirely sure what is best for combat in that regard. You know what? Let's set this up so that we've just got Cataphract our Marine Armor, Recon Armor, and then um, same thing with the helmet. So Marine Helmet, Recon Helmet, uh, Cataphract Helmet. I assume they'll swap out simple helmets for Cataphract Helmets as they become available. I actually have no idea, so we'll just go ahead and enable all. If that is the case, we might as well just enable all armor types, right? Because in theory, they'll swap it out for something better. I have no idea if that's the case. I have no idea if that's how the game works. The only exception I want to make to this is... Uh, is Sharamus, who we want to paste the settings in, but we want to change it so that allows play armor instead. And shield belt. So now if we go uh, transfer to armor rack, they'll remove all of their armor and put it on those armor racks until we click equip from armor rack, at which point they'll go ahead and take it back. There you go. Look at that. Right, perfect, perfect. And that should make them a lot faster. Obviously, they will go and re-equip clothes as is when is necessary. But it just means that now, look at how fast Port moves compared to how he was before. Because he's not wearing that really crazy heavy armor. And then I think I can go as far to say with their outfits. Um, let's go ahead and edit their outfits. I should be able to clear all. And then just let them wear the jumpsuits. And if we go just jumpsuit and just... Um, overalls and then whatever gloves they want to wear. Because again, I'm not entirely sure what's best for that one. They should be they should be fine. I'll say fine with uh, headgear as well. As far as I recall, it's only armor that slows them down. So any headgear is is fine by me. Any handwear and footwear. And then to be honest, I think that's fine. That should give them all of the movement speed they need without. I think they probably wear some trousers. Oh no, wait, you can't with the jumpsuit, can you? Either way, I'll sort this out in between episodes so it's a bit more precise. Um, but that way they should have the best outfits possible at all times. Oh my god, at long last. I thought that would never happen. We finally got Rob to our colony as well. Rob the Gargantuan. Now I realize it, of course we don't need him anymore, because we're the only reason we were recruiting him was to butcher a load of people without him getting upset. Sure, everyone else gets upset, but it will stop him constantly getting that debuff of being around dead bodies all the time. He's good at artistic though, so I guess we found ourselves a new artist. Just what we didn't fucking need. Um, oh god, why did I even bother recruiting you in the end? Shit. Well, never mind. He's here now. Um, he's another gun. That's what matters here. He's another gun. He's another guy who can harvest and grow at the end of the day. I mean, we've got a spare bedroom, so the only other cost is, what, like the food that we're going to feed him? We've got plenty of food as well. Um, right, there we go. Hopefully that should be good. Uh, cleaning is obviously lowest priority, and then managing, definitely not for you. Okay, that should, uh, that should suffice. Now we can shut down the prison. 
at least temporarily, because some of the new changes to the way prisoners work with the Empire mod are going to be... Oh, man, I need to set someone on repair. This is ridiculous. Get so much broken down shit. Right, there we go. Um, the new Empire mod stuff is going to make this prison more important than ever. But to be honest, we don't really need 988 rice just sitting around there rotting away. Oh, that's a shame. But it could have been a lot worse. Defense of our settlement failed, but we have... Only lost the quarry. And again, that could be down to the fact that we sent a decent military to try and combat them. But, I mean, just losing the quarry isn't massive. I mean, arguably, it's the most important building of all. But, uh, what was that? M M M M Menez? Where was that? Empty building slot. Right, it was that one. Um, I mean, that is fairly significant. But it's one of the cheaper buildings to rebuild, as far as I remember. Yeah, 250 silver. I mean, I'd love to start researching marine armor and things like that. But, of course, we've got no steel. So, researching that is a bit pointless because we can't produce anything. Um, <coughs> what else is even worth getting at this stage of the game, then? Uh, <coughs> or maybe I should rephrase that. What can we get that doesn't require steel that's still going to be useful to the base? The answer is very little. Um, there was the cryo generator, right? C cry, cry, cryo, cold, really cold, freezing. I have no idea. Um, we do have that mod enabled, but I haven't actually seen anything from it. I don't even know if it's really working. I was going to say, we only need a little bit more power to really still be ahead of the game. But if we build anything else, we are going to be in a power negative again, even with the nuclear reactor, which is why I've been doing things like trenches, for example. Um, man, I don't know where to go from here. If anybody's got any good research suggestions, please let me know. Obviously, I've been told the cannon is good, so we'll move on to that one. But if anyone has anything they'd like to see... Throw them at me and we'll, we'll start work on that one. Because as far as I'm concerned, there's nothing else even worth researching right now. You know what? We'll also throw in nuclear power there. Why not? And actually, it might end up being good if we research things like... <laughs> mind altering technology? I was going to say psychic foil weaving. Because we're going to get hyperweave from the spiders relatively soon. So we might as well research the, 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 the unlocks that allow us to use that hyperweave in production. Whoa, that could be good. Iron husk beetles... They're the ones, as I recall, that drop the... They drop steel chunks. Now, I know I wanted infinite steel. Uh, but this is a very, very... Good God, they're 3,000 apiece. Christ. Um, I mean, how fast does the steel generate? Actually, it's a pretty good speed. If we can get enough of these things going, uh, we can obviously use the the, the, the the drugs on them, right? So artificial impregnant requires two medicine. We just breed a shitload of these things and then have them produce a shitload of steel for us. I could, I could be into that. Male iron husk beetle. Artificially impregnate. Has science gone too far? Oh, Rose is going to do the heavy lifting herself, huh? Taking iron husk beetle 2 to bed. Well, this I'm going to have to edit it out, depending on what the hell goes down here. Uh, okay. And and, and how, how that doing? Gathering useful materials from unrefined... What did you do that? Need material. I know we need regular medicine. Do we not have regular medicine? Who glitters that medicine? Um, I thought we had shitloads of regular... Yeah, we do. We've got loads of it. Maybe we shouldn't put keep it in here as well. That's my bad. Um, hang on. Med medicine. Let's go ahead and remove it out of here and put it into the hospital. That would certainly be a lot more useful than where it is right now. Um, all medicine is allowed there. Actually, maybe not cactopines or... You know what? Let's just, let's just save this one specifically for regular medicine. Um, why is that not allowed then? Is it because of the pharmacist mod? I mean, no, that definitely allows... That definitely allows medicine. I have no idea. Needs better than herbal medicine. Right. Which we definitely have now. I know when I tried this before we didn't, but now we definitely do. Why can't we do it? Now why can't we do it? Um, maybe the medicine's reserved? No, it's, it's not being touched yet. Um, maybe it is something to do with the pharmacist mod. What do you think? Should we just... Maybe I should just straight remove the pharmacy mod, because it might be interacting with a lot of things without me realizing. Um, granted, it's been very, very useful thus far, but I feel like it might actually be breaking things in this regard. Um, let's try it again. Uh, ro 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 rose and... Need material. Um, maybe we need something else. Maybe it's not just as simple as using some medicine on a beetle. Uh, does it say we need anything else? Health? That's what pregnant. Requires two medicine. No, that's definitely it. I have no idea. Yeah, ingredients times two medicine. Okay, I might go and remove the pharmacist mod very quickly just to see if that's what causing that, that that's what's causing the issue. Oh Christ, I don't think we've got enough to. Okay, we're one armor act short for God's sake, and that's only because we haven't got any armor on it yet. Okay, fair enough. Wait, I thought we were only one armor act short. Am I am I going mad? How many have we got? Uh, twelve for fourteen people. 
Okay, well, something, something's gone wrong here, but it doesn't matter too much. Um, so we're two armor racks short, then, of everybody having their own dedicated armor rack. But we've got a raid turn up. It's actually not that significant at all. The downside to this one is apparently they've got sappers. So we are going to have to send half the squad one way, half the squad the other way. Let's see if our, let's see if our armor racks work, then. So let's go ahead and click equip. Helotos cannot equip because this is empty. Right, so Helotos doesn't have an armor rack. Neither does Rose or Pork. So give me Pork, Helotos, and Rose. Why have our three best people not got an armor rack? I will admit, I was just going through the armor rack list. I'll go ahead and get them to equip uh, whatever is in here manually, basically. Just whatever flat jackets and crap that we've got. Is there anything even in this washing machine? I didn't even know that this thing's working, I'll be honest with you. Anyway, the cool thing is, these guys are a relatively weak faction, but have a load of steel shit. So once again, right in queue, as we run out of steel, we should be able to even check how many were down here. It's actually not that bad. 19 plus another 17. We are going to be outnumbered basically 2 to 1 on each side. More than 2 to 1. But we'll give it a go. We'll see how it works. Okay, team, go get yourself squatted up with some gear. We might have to go and hunt them preemptively to stop them getting through. I don't know why now they're using sappers. Very weird. Okay, well, whoever gets armored up first... Oh, I should have drafted them. Fuck. Always make sure you draft, then equip from armor. Right, that's my bad. Right, there we go. Okay, Sharamus Delta up, so you guys are ready to go. I'm going to send those guys up here, because they are already through. Holy shit, that took them no time. We need to work on our top-line defenses then, don't we? Uh, please fuck off. You leave... I... Leave that alone. Sharmus, get in there. Um, right, pain, quarantine, and what's it? I'm going to send these two guys along as well. And then hopefully that'll be enough to... Oh, pull back, pull back, pull back. I'm sorry, where's your gun? What are you doing, you madman? Okay, Delta, pull back, pull back, pull back. Okay, I just wanted to distract them. They're, they're going to kill our Tetra Slug, but there's not much I can really do about that. Um, right, there we go, there we go, there we go. We're in. Okay, you guys line up as well. How are we doing down here? Everyone is roughly equipped. Let's make sure we get Helotos, Forswear, Rose, Forswear, Pork. Please, just wear anything. Flak vest. That'll do. It's better than nothing. We just don't have enough gear. I would love a bit more steel to craft some more armor. Um, <laughs> in traditional fashion, really. But now that we've got the armor axe, we can have people wear the plate armor. Granted, it's much, much slower movement speed, but... What are you doing? Upstar is incapable of violent? What? Since when? What? 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 <laughs> what? Since when is he incapable of violent? He just won't do it. I'm so confused. Slay Farmer. He's always been able to shoot. Why now can he not shoot? Incapable of violent. Caused by backstory, Slave Farmer? That's literally not true. Caused by backstory, Slave Farmer. Unable to handle violence. But he's always been... Are you telling me he is ever since the start of the campaign he's been incapable of violence? Hang on. Since when has he been a fucking slave farmer as well? That's not true. Him and Delta had the same backstory. Huh? <laughs> I have no idea. Um, That hasn't always been the case, has it? Okay. We're going to have to fight this with one less guy than usual. That's all right. I'm sure we'll manage still. Um, are you guys equipped then? You guys are all ready to go. Yeah, Pork's still putting on his armor vest by the looks of it. Oh, no, they're all good. Um, melee uh, range weapons then, people, if you don't mind. Come through. Help us out, for God's sake. But where are the others? They're going to mine through down here by the looks of it. Let's go ahead and call back all these robots as well very quickly. So I'm also suppressing hiccups here. How are we looking? Let's get these guys to line up down here. Any prisoners we can take would be fantastic. So let's all go ahead and line up here, and then we'll make sure that Rob does not have a range... Rob does not have a range weapon. Oh, because he's the new guy. Right, I haven't had time to give him a bloody range weapon yet. What have we got for him? We've got the HMG. Um, it's a bi-coded charge lance that we could give him. There is a charged shotgun. To be honest, that might work pretty well. Let's go give him that one. Rob the Gargantuan? Yeah. Come and grab, my friend, your... I'll rename him for tomorrow as well. Come grab your... <laughs> wherever the fuck it is. Hang on, bear with me here. Um, boy, it could be. It could be absolutely anywhere. How are we doing? Not too bad. Not too bad. Not too bad. Okay. Get into a good position where combat is possible and kill them all. Oh, I bet you feel stupid now. God, they really did do a number on my Tetris slug, didn't they? Sharamus, get in there. Kill them all. And then we'll send these guys around as, as backup. Let's go line up around this way. Kill a few more while they're running and gunning. There we go. Somebody said that apparently running and gunning lowers movement speed. I had no idea that was a thing. 
Um, now I know that if we want to move faster in an emergency, we absolutely can. Oh, you're, you're fighting the big boy now. Imagine you've, you've come in, you've just clubbed this massive slug to death in this dark cave, and then out the corner of your eye, a light is blocked out by Sharamus. Two gigantic metal tentacles, massive shield, armored to the tits, comes in and hacks your boys to death. That is fucking fantastic. I don't know how well he'll last, especially in melee combat against that many people. But now we can send him some backup too. You three come in this side. You three prepare to reinforce from this side. Okay, how are we looking with this direction then? They are still breaking the doors down. I'm hoping we can get rid of these guys before we have to go down and help everyone else out. Alright, never mind then. Remember what I said about Shatterman's being a fearsome warrior? No. Incorrect. Uh, he got punched in the torso and died. What are you talking about? <laughs> He's wearing fucking plate armor. What do you mean he got punched in the torso and died? Tried to slam with his left fist and... Fickelin smashed Sharamus with her left fist, crushing his torso. No, that is bullshit. <sighs> I don't know. Uh, what? What are you talking about? <laughs> For fuck's sake! Right, open the open these doors. Right, hold hold open, hold open, open these doors. Right, get in there, kill them all. Uh, please actually go in though. Right, get in there, kill them dead. I'm so annoyed with these fucking people. Kill Sharamus, will you? Yeah, I'll show you about killing fucking Sharamus. What about my Tetris log? Bring that 15 hours. That gives us enough time to have these guys back these guys up. And then these guys can kill the other guys. And then everybody is happy. Besides the guys that we have shot. Unbelievable. How this game. Sometimes, sometimes it really... We've got one person who's now apparently incapable of combat overnight. And then Sharamus got punched by fucking Saitama. I'm so... F Fucking annoyed. He was our, he was the head of our cyber -op project. For fuck's sake, right, never mind. Alright. This is for Sharamus, you fucking shit. Kill them all. Oh, look at it. It's art. This this is art right now. Just kill them all dead. I mean, I know they're in melee range, and that's probably not the ideal situation, but they're gonna get absolutely annihilated. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah, this is this is nice. I feel like we've avenged Sharamus fairly fairly successfully there. Perfect. Perfect. There's a couple more left. Just just give him a second here. I just cannot believe that. Our strongest, most armored warrior killed by a single punch. Un unbearable. Right, get it. No, no, no. I didn't want you to shoot him. I wanted you to go down here and finish off that other shit. Are we good? Please die. No, 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 no. Stand here. Shoot. Oh, they're, they're dead now. Okay. Uh, What a complete mess. I think we can all agree. What a complete mess. Um, Is, ever, is anybody dying? Does anyone need immediate med medical care? No, not at all. Okay, in that case, transfer to Armorak. And then... And then go about your business. And let's start stripping people, taking prisoners. Aramus' sacrifice has provided us with a lot of steel. But I am very fucked off by that. Unbelievable. Sharamus Hunter, dead. Strip him. Strip him and I guess we'll bury him in the Hall of Champions. Um... Somebody said also, if there are people that we want to resurrect, don't put the coffins near the generator because it will desiccate the corpses. Very well. I will I will make sure that we don't put that there. Man, I just... Oh, so this is your fucking fault. If you were able to shoot, we might not have lost Charamus. They are tending to the Tetra Slug, so he should be fine. Crossbow Vault tended 95%, 83%. Yeah, he's good. 33 conditions need tending. Oh, God. Okay. Time to feed the spiders then, Errol. And we'll go ahead and we'll capture all of the elves that are... All of the elves that basically need, uh, that, that are worth capturing, we can send them off as prisoners to our colonies to help provide a useful service for our people. Fucking unreal. Unreal. Damn, that's a lot of infused gear too. Good God. Okay, uh, capture you, and then capture you, and then capture you. I'm just going to queue everybody up capturing people at this stage. Capture you, capture you, and capture you. Uh, fear is injured. Rob's fine though. Rob, capture and capture. There we go. Okay, that should provide us with a pretty decent amount of prisoners, assuming Rose can actually get over there on time to go and tend to them. In fact, I'm going to just have Rose immediately start tending to them. Temporarily, I'm going to hold these doors open. I need to remember not to forget to shut them again, given that they are the doors to our prison. Oh, someone else has stood back up, have they? Who is it? Oh, it's that person. Get out of here. Mobile restaurant. Do they want some elves? The plus side, we don't need another armor rack. <laughs> oh, well. Um, 
Rose, and then... Oh, that one is that one is a sign, isn't it? My bad, okay. Um, Rose, let's go ahead and get you to transfer to Armorak, if you don't mind. Halatos, you've got an Armorak as well. Let's get you to transfer to that. What a mess. I know it's flat jackets. It doesn't make that much of a difference. We might as well min-max it now that we've got it, huh? At least we got all of this stuff built. And we've got our artillery finished as well. We've got our settlements starting to be worked. We've, we've got ourselves a look. We've got ourselves a full-blown thrombo as well, which is quite nice. We're looking at 9,000 silver in 4.8 days because the bills just came through. So we'll go ahead and resolve all of that. And then that is going to be immediately invested as, you know, straight back into our military settlement. Which now it's military level of four. Very cool. Um, what do we need it again? So 3,000 to be able to upgrade it. We're four silver off because, <laughs> of course, we fucking would be. Um, and what's our total profit from this place? Very low, but that is to be expected. It's not there to turn a profit. As long as they can pay for themselves, that's all I really care about. And we got ourselves a full prison. I think everybody here is going to survive as well, more importantly. That's great news. Holy shit. That's fantastic. A full prison. We can choose to send those people all to whatever settlement we want, obviously, for, for the workers that, uh, that we so desperately need. Because profits are just not high enough. What a raid. I can't- I would have expected of all the raids that we've had, that one was the- Third most devastating raid, inarguably, d due to due to our losses there. Poor Sharamus, lived as he died. But you know what? In memory, Rob the Gargantuan will be renamed. Given that he's an orc as well, Sharamus the second. There you go, my friend. Sharamus lives on. Thank you all for watching. We'll leave that one there for today. Apologies if this episode is slightly late. It's uh, <laughs> it's a lot later than I realised it was. Shit, my bad. Thank you to the top tier patrons for making this series possible in the first place. A shout out to Palvis Presley, Harry McGowan, Gwen S, Bad Burrito 3 and 6, Chris, Odie, Average Gamer 419, Harik, Tyler Kendall, Amethyst Corona, Shay, Jonah Waters, DKO, Paul, and everyone else at the Insane Tier Levels on Patreon for making the channel possible in the first place. Thank you to you guys for keeping us going during these few months of lockdown. Thank you as well to Moira Valkyrie, Haji Dumar, Anchor, Ben Taylor, Attila, Lampy, Gothamo, Erotha, Botbin, Shardul, Callum McLeod, Asaro, Zega the Chaos King, Empty Machine, Llewellyn Thomas, Valkyrie, and everyone else at Patreon as well. Rest in peace, Sharamus.